say the other great writer, the man of African heritage during this time. He was essentially a contemporary of Pushkin, uh -huh. and his name is Alexander Dumas Pierre. Talk yes. about Alexander Dumas. Dumas, another another gentleman I wish I would have known. If yes. somebody would have told me the author of The Three Musketeers and The uh, Count of Monte Cristo was a black man and that the central characters were based off of a black man, yeah, I would have wanted to read it more. Dumas, <clears throat> like, Dumas, to me, these gentlemen are similar. I think they had a similar impact and within France and Russia, and Dumas even an impact in France and Russia. Um, now, I do wonder how much of an impact Pushkin had on Dumas, even though they um, they kind of missed each other by, by maybe 20, 30 years, but um, Dumas spending time in Russia um, after he was exiled out of, out of France, so spending time in Russia, I wonder how much he was influenced by Pushkin, but Dumas being able to write in various styles, both Dumas and Pushkin uh, are given credit for <laughs> introducing magazine style writing as well as romantic yeah. writing. And Dumas was another romantic. <laughs> oh, Dumas was very flamboyant too. They were both flamboyant. Yeah. I understand Pushkin might have, uh, might be dressed in a yellow shirt and a red scarf and some light colored pants with no underwear and a top hat and these long sideburns. And Dumas never let people forget that he was in the crowd. Right. Dumas, right. like Pushkin, ne was never allowed to forget his African heritage. And they both <clears throat> embraced it. There's a story, I lived in France, I spent a lot of time in France. Mm -hmm. And I have a good relationship with the person I consider the number one biographer of Pushkin and Hannibal, but also in some measures, uh, Dumas. And he told me a story about Dumas once that I've never seen in a book that uh, the great African-American actor Ira Aldridge came to France and did a performance of Othello. And Dumas was in the front row, he was in the front row. And he was so, and he was a big man and he was so carried away that he leaped on the stage after the performance and embraced Ira Aldridge in a huge bear hug and put his fist in the air and said, I too am a Negro. Now that was Dumas. I love that man. Yes, yes. He he loved who he was. When yeah. he when the more he learned, because what I one thing I love about him is the intentionality of changing his last name from day and I, I know I'm gonna say this wrong, but De La Pelatre or De La Pelatre, something that was his original last name. Intentionally changing that to Dumas to honor his grandmother and his African heritage as, as he became more of a writer, which means he understood where he came from. So let's talk about that for a minute. Dumas, his lineage, the African aspect of his lineage is traced to an African woman in Haiti. Right. And there's so much going on in Haiti. We should be talking about it more than we do. Pushkin traced his African lineage to his great grandfather, who was born near the sh the shores of uh, Lake Chad in Cameroon. Right. And the another thing about the do you don't hear much about Pushkin's uh, children, but Dumas comes from three generations. One, you have uh, Thomas Dumas, who apparently the uh, Count of Monte Cristo is based on and who became a general in the French army. And then Dumas, the writer who also wrote um, the Man in the Iron Mask. And then you have Dumas' son, who became a member of the French Academy of Science. This is remarkable, especially right, right, right. considering the times in which they lived. So I can never get enough Dumas, and I can never get enough Pushkin. And I visited Russia, as I mentioned, on Pushkin's yeah, yeah. 200th anniversary. And in France, in Paris, I've been to Alexander Dumas, the writer's grave site. He's buried in the Pantheon and put oh, okay. the flowers there. So I feel a strong connection with these brothers, as do you. Yes. Like I say, as I, as I was, as I'm studying them and just going back over the information and, and looking at them, and I'm just seeing the strong connections between these two brothers. Like, I, imagine, just imagine these two brothers being able to to hook up at one point yeah. and write yeah. together. Yeah. Like, the, the, the beauty they would have created, just the 
like they probably would have created two or three other sub forms of writings and just general forms of writings because they were just expressing themselves and creating new new ways of writing new new ways of literature like pushkin wasn't trying to create uh modern russian literature he was just expressing himself yeah you know he, he wasn't he wasn't trying to create romanticism or romantic writings he was trying to woo a lady now what surprised me when i went to russia the most surprising thing is that virtually no russian or no russian scholar i lectured there mm -hmm. None of them denied that Pushkin had an African ancestor. You would think, based on our experience here in Babylon, USA, that racism would have been front and center and his African roots would have been uh, denied to, ex to an extent. That's the way it is in France about Duma. But P everybody recognizes that Pushkin had an African ancestor, but they don't see him as an African. They just see him as a Russian with an African ancestor. It was the first time in my life, and I'd already begun to travel a lot, where the one drop rule was challenged. And I began to see that other people, the other groups, other nations don't see race and, and ethnicity like we are taught to see it in the United States. Yeah, I, I know that here in these, in these YouTube comments, a lot of times people, especially like some of the videos that you and I have done, people have come in and say, this person is not, this this person not that that's not how we see it here and i mean okay but that doesn't deny that person's african ancestry and they embrace that african ancestry let's do my story i know we're running down on time this is a good story too uh -huh. i think that this is in jay rogers uh second volume of world's great men of color Dumas' daughter is getting married and i guess she's getting married to a french fellow and the uh the, the bridegroom's um, or the groom's family comes to the wedding and they see all these black people, they call them Negroes. And they were a bit alarmed. And they come to Duma and say, who are all these Negroes? And apparently Duma had invited every black person in Paris. Every one of them got a, an invitation to let off. And Duma says, these are all members of my family. You'll have to get used to it. Now, I don't know if the wedding proceeded or not, but Duma, we love him because he didn't run from who he was. Right. right. So not only are they brilliant, but they embrace their African heritage. And I love those brothers big time. Yes. 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 You should never invite me to come on and talk about Duma and Pushkin because we'd be here all day, man. Look, I, I knew early today, I was like, we're going to nerd out on these subjects. <laughs> I was getting so excited as I was going back over my notes. I was Check like, this out. As, as time went along, Pushkin's writings, I'm not, not Pushkin, but Dumas' writing became a little stale. And so he changed his writing style and he wrote, and at the end of his life, he wrote a cookbook. I have a copy of that. Right. And he said, that he always said, this was my best work. <laughs> Here's the story about Dumas, no, last Dumas story. I That's love right. it. Dumas is on a deathbed, he's dying. And according to the people around him, uh, he said, I see death coming towards me, but I am not afraid. I will tell her a story and she will be kind to me. I love it, man. Love it, love it, love it. <laughs> be poetic on my death. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. So with the time we have left, let's transition so we can talk and talk about your upcoming webinars. And yeah. then we want to spend some time promoting our platforms as well. So. Uh, tell us about your upcoming webinars that you have. Doc. I have a webinar this Friday on the African image and art from Africa to Europe to the Americas. It's at uh, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That's this Friday. I have another one Monday at 7.30 Eastern Standard Time. And it, it's, that's the 19th. And it's about the CDs of India. In the United States right now, he's come to Africa for his son's wedding is a brother named Dr. Pashington Obing. And he has actually interacted with the CDs. The CDs are a group of Africans in India. Uh -huh. and he's talked with them, walked with them, and I'm gonna have a conversation with him. It's gonna be tough. Now for people who are interested, the easiest thing to do, you have to register, is go to my website, www.drrenoco.com www.drrenoco.com and you can register. It's a Zoom presentation. And on that same website is information about my Patreon page. Now, what is this Patreon thing about? This is a way for people to give back. 
this is this is a subscriber page. I have one, you have one. Yes. And the idea is we put all of this work into it. Everybody's not going to attend the website. Everybody, God forbid, is not going to watch on the shoulders of giants. But I think that people appreciate the work that we put into it. And so this is your opportunity to give back and to contribute. One of my mentors, a man named Ivan Van Sertema, used to say, Renoko, the worst feeling of all is to feel like I'm alone. And we don't want to feel that way. We right, want right. to feel like we're all in this together, that everybody's not going to go to Russia. Everybody's not going to go to France. Everybody's not going to post. Everybody's not going to have a podcast or do a webinar. But everybody can contribute, and we need your support. Yes. Your, your turn, my brother. Yes. So I do want to say there's a link in the description. If you click the link in the description, you can register for Dr. Rashidi's webinars. I made it kind of easy to go to the link in the description. It'll take you to his website where you can register for the webinars. But echoing, echoing what Dr. Rashidi said, um, On the Shows of Giants was created to tell the stories of our sung and unsung heroes of the African diaspora. I grew up. I grew up going to all black schools and learned a little bit about black history. So a lot of this that I know, it's what I learned in college and self-education. But we spend a lot of time researching. We spend a lot of time writing. We spend a lot of time working, collaborating, doing what we can to make sure we get our information out. We went from a point in time to thinking that I have no idea how to learn about myself to being in this digital time to where this information is literally at our fingertips. Dr. Rashidi is his information is accessible. He's very, very a lot more accessible now than it was 15, 20 years ago, especially like when YouTube first started. So I have a Patreon as well, patreon.com backslash OGSOG, where you can support, you can see all of my videos. You can go to my On the Shoulders of Giants YouTube channel, you, youtube.com backslash On the Shoulders One. Subscribe, view the videos. I have over 300 videos of people of African descent. Pick a video, start, have some fun. Uh, support my website, www.ontheshouldersone.com or www.ontheshoulders.org. I have a free app. All the people who I profile on my website and my YouTube channel, I do a breakdown question to answer on my app. That's a free app for Android. We make it easy. Like I, I love giving this information. Uh, I remember when I first started trying to contribute to society, I started in the motivational speaking realm, but it didn't feel right. And then the more I started growing on the shows of giants and, and working with it and learning more, I felt like this is, this is what I'm supposed to be doing. And it's, an, it's definitely an honor to be able to link with you, doctor, because well, I feel the same way about you. Yes, sir. <clears throat> because you represent another generation. One of the worst things is to feel, or we talked about being alone. Uh -huh. but one of the worst things for me is the prospect of my work not continuing when I'm gone. So I see that in you. We talked about Duma, we talked about Pushkin and their brilliance. I see a, a level of brilliance in yourself. And so I want to support you. So while you say it's an honor to hang with me and have this conversation, I feel equally honored to be able to share with you and to talk about someone that I would like to see as a, a kind of a student. Yes. And yes. Assessor, yes. And the belief that the blood of Pushkin and Duma runs in me. And if the blood and Pushkin and Duma runs in me, then it runs in you also. And we will in turn pass that down to future generations. That's our duty and our obligation. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And I appreciate that because that's that's where I see myself. When I first decided that this was my path, I'm, I'm looking up to Dr. Ben. I'm looking up to Dr. Clark. I'm looking up to you. I'm looking up to others and thinking in my head, I want to carry this. I want to be one of the ones who carry this torch on to the future. So I'm just doing my best to put my, my foot forward. And like I said, it is an, a pleasure to be able to link with you because want to be able to carry that torch and i know there's others with me and others out there who feel the same way so we're just here to make sure that we do our part and what we can bring to the table we're bringing it to the table so yeah. yes sir so um uh, once again w when are your webinars going to be aired the webinars are going to be friday and monday 
That's Friday. the 16th and 19th of June. <clears throat> the one this Friday, the 16th, will be on the African Presence in Art. Original photographs. And one yes. of the things we haven't done is show pictures. The fit, I'm going to throw down. I have some photographs. And then on the 19th, we'll do the one on the, really the African presence in India with the focus on the group called the CDs with Brother Pashington Obing. All you have to do, go to the website, www.drrenoco.com and all the information will come up. Right. All right. I will be in attendance. So I know you will. I want, I want all of my listeners, all of my, all of my supporters register. Come check this website out. All of the people who are upset because they don't want to teach critical race theory and all these other things. Hey, we, we shouldn't be expecting anybody else to teach us this information anyway. We have the information. It's being taught. You don't have to go anywhere else. It's for us, by us. Be a part of it. Be a part of the webinars. They are excellent webinars. I have so much fun at the webinars. I, I can personally vouch that it's going to be a great time and you are going to learn a lot. So with that being said, Dr. Rashida, you want to close us out with some final remarks? Up you mighty race. You can accomplish what you will. I think the comments that you made about us teaching us really, <clears throat> really is the point that we cannot expect anyone to tell our story but us. And if we don't tell our story, and we'll be the victims of that. There you go. Hey, can't say it any better. So until then, we'll see you guys next time. See you in the webinars, and then we'll see you next time. Thank you, my brother. No problem. Thank you.